So grab a snack, grab a friend, and hang in. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. What's up guys? Welcome to today's vlog. Today what we're going to be going over is a medium length shag haircut. The thing I like most about this is that we're going to do some layering techniques throughout the haircut to create those short layers. I think what people struggle with when they're cutting this haircut is that the layers get really heavy within it. Then we're going to blow it dry and what we're going to do is some dry haircutting techniques that I know you guys are going to like. A lot of slide cutting in this to create that shattered edge. So you can see this is the end result. We have a lot of layering in there. You can see the layering in the back and then this broken, shattered baseline. And that's what makes this haircut so unique. These techniques are very salon friendly. You can use them every day in the salon. So let's not waste any time. Let's get started. Here we go with our step-by-step. -step. So I wanna start sectioning this haircut symmetrically. So what I'm gonna do is a center parting all the way down center back. Then what I'm gonna do is create a triangle section right in the bang or fringe area and um, I'm gonna go about two inches up from the forehead on that to the point of that triangle. So what this is gonna do is give me a symmetrical section on the front of the head that I can create any type of bang that I want later on. Now we're gonna create a horseshoe section off of the corner of that triangle. So it's a little bit higher than the corner. Uh, the reason I did that is I wanted to stay right along that parietal ridge area. Uh, depending on the density of the hair is really how big you're gonna make this horseshoe section. So if they have a higher density of hair, you're probably gonna do a higher up uh, U shape or, or horseshoe section because you wanna really look at the top of the haircut as the roof. And if you have really thick hair, you don't want too much hair falling over top of everything else. So that's the only sectioning for the haircut. So it makes it pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is start on the side of the head uh, I chose the left-hand side of the head. I'm going to take vertical sections or vertical partings throughout, um, about an inch wide. So because of the density of the hair, uh, like we talked about earlier, it's not super thick, so I can take inch sections. If she has thicker hair and it's hard to see your guide through it, then definitely break that up. But we're just going to take those inch sections, bring everything forward to a stationary guide, and cut it. The key thing here is the elevation that I'm working with. So uh, think about, look at my fingers, look how high I'm elevating the hair it's pretty much parallel with the face um, if I went any higher it would remove more weight and if I go any lower it's gonna start to build up weight so it really depends on do you want to expand the shape around the face or do you want to collapse the shape around the face again that's based on density so if they have a higher density real thick hair then you're gonna elevate higher if they have a lower density of hair thinner hair then you're gonna uh, keep your elevation low and build up a little more weight and maybe get a little lighter towards the top because even though you have a low density of hair you don't have a lot of hair doesn't mean you don't want layering and movement uh, it's just how much do you want is gonna really change the look of the haircut so you can see that face frame that builds up that's what the shag part is all about but what i didn't want is to only over direct everything forward and build up a ton of weight in the back the shag kind of has layering all over it so what i'm doing is now i'm going to create some concave layers in the back so i brought everything forward pushed all the weight to the back and now i'm going into the back and removing all of that extra weight that i created so like I've talked about in a lot of past videos, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I've done over 600 videos of different haircuts. And the key thing here is when you're cutting hair, you're pushing weight to a certain place to either do something with it later or you're pushing it somewhere for a purpose. In this case, I pushed it to the back because I wanted to remove it from the front. But now I've got to deal with the weight that's in the back. So I'm creating the concave layering. And the great thing about the shag haircut is all of the moves movement and the layers that are in it. So I wanted to keep this medium length. The other thing I want to show you guys is this is coming all the way back to the center. So everything I'm working with is a stationary guide. It was a stationary guide in the front. Now in the back with the concave layering, I'm pushing everything to the center uh, back of the head to create that. So what that's going to do is have all of the weight kind of meet it, uh, right behind the ear. The, the thing that makes that okay is that we're going so high with the layering, it's not going to be super heavy. 
Um, the other thing I want you guys to notice is that I haven't really messed with the length of the haircut yet. We're going to do the length of the haircut when it's dry. I want to see the weakness of the hairline uh, or the baseline of the haircut. I want to see all of that dry. There's no sense in cutting it wet. So now we're going to work our way into the top. And what I'm showing you there is that this is also going to be a stationary guide. Everything's going to come to the center. So what I'm going to do is follow the head shape. So I'm creating a rounded shape to the haircut using 90 degree layers. The 90 degree layers are going to give me a seamless feel. There's no weight being distributed really. It's seamlessly passing those layers over the head. When you see somebody that has a really heavy weight line in their haircut, it's because the angle wasn't quite what they wanted. Um, so you're seeing that weight build up. Um, so what I'm doing is going through following the round of the head with my parting and then over directing it to the center back using that as a stationary guide. So there's a couple things you're going to notice me doing throughout uh, this portion of the haircut. I will comb multiple times and change the elevation of the cut because I want to keep it at 90 degrees. I think a lot of people would just pull this up real quick, cut it off, and then just move on. And then in the dry cut, they'd have to fix the weight that they had build up. What I'm doing is I'm combing multiple times, creating that seamless feel and following that 90 degree point across the head. Head shape plays a key role in how this haircut is going to turn out. So because the head shape is round, I have to shift my angle every single time I comb to make sure that I'm at the angle that I wanted. And 90 degrees is the key to keeping that seamless throughout. All right, so we're just finishing off that section look at how much over direction is happening. So I'm taking everything from that side temple area, bringing it around the head and cutting it in the center back over my guideline. Whenever you're cutting hair, you want to think about, all right, if I hold it at this point, what is it going to do when I let it go? Anytime you over direct something in an extreme matter. So we're over directing this all the way from the temple to the very back of the head. So Technically, that would be pushing a lot of weight to the front. Now, when you match that up with the right elevation, that's when it changes everything. So if I did that same over direction, but kept everything low, maybe low crown area, occipital bone area, I would have so much weight pushed to the front that the haircut to me wouldn't really look right and the client would have a hard time with it. Because we're at that 90 degree point at the very back of the head, um, it is still keeping, uh, by the time I get around to the side temple area and I over direct it over, we still have a high elevation. So it's still going to keep the haircut nice and light. So you got to think about a few things when you're cutting hair. Think about where you're over directing the hair to, what it's going to do then, and also the elevation that you're working with um, within that portion of the haircut. So now, fun little trick with the bangs. What I did was I combed every, that whole triangle over, twisted it towards my body uh, over top. That gives me that over direction. And then I just cut it with a razor, which gives me a nice textured, fun feel to the fringe. It's nice and light. And also, it's not a perfect line. So it gives me a little more freedom. I think that matches up really well with a shag haircut because of all the layering and texture in it. To cut that fringe, we use the carving comb, which is available on freesaloneducation.com. It's probably the coolest $35 tool you will buy because it's a comb uh, attached to two different types of razors. So you have one razor that cuts 100% of the hair, another razor that cuts 50% of the hair, and then you have a comb. You have a wide tooth comb or a fine tooth comb, depending on which carving comb you get. So it's just a very versatile tool. You can use it while you cut hair with scissors. You can have all those tools in your hand at once, or you can use it by itself. So it's it's pretty awesome. This is also the Bricado Viber Straight Iron. The thing I love about this flat iron and what separates it from all the other ones I've used is it vibrates as it irons over the hair. So it creates less damage, less friction, and also a nice smooth pass through of the iron. It's digital, works really well. I keep it on 410 degrees. Usually when I'm working on my guests, if they have fine, fragile hair, I'll keep it more around the 390 area, maybe 370. It's a great iron if you're looking for a new one for your hair. Now, I want to talk about the switch and scissors that I just made. So the, the very beginning part of the haircut, I did everything with my DB20 scissor, which is my precision cutting scissor. It's a 5.7 inch scissor. Now I'm moving to my Mizutani Puffin, which is a dry cutting scissor. Uh, one of my favorites, you can see how thick the blades are. And I'm doing a slide cutting technique, which is a half close of the scissor, sliding the scissor down. Now why this technique works and why I love it so much is 
because I went through and did all that layering, so it skinnied out the bottom of the haircut. So I really was able to see where I wanted to cut it dry and then just go through and slide cut and define that portion. You couldn't do this. You couldn't just start off by flat ironing somebody's hair without a haircut and then go through and just slide cut the bottom and make it shattered. There's a purpose behind everything that we do. So we remove the weight from the top of the head using the concave layering, allow it to fall down, and then go through, do our detail work dry, and it just makes the whole haircut make sense. So I went through all the way around the haircut doing that slide cutting technique, just a half open, half close of the scissor, like I said, and it just pulls in all of that texture, makes the uh, layers have a little bit of separation and air, and then I use a the Paul Mitchell spray wax just to um, style it up, add that texture, bring it to life, and then finish it with a Bricado Maximum Hold hairspray just to give it a little extra hold. You could see all of that texture in there, uh, the face frame, how it works. It's medium length. It's such a great cut. Hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. All right, guys, like always, if you like this haircut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends out there. Also, if you have any questions, post those in the comments below. Also, if you're not a hairdresser and you're looking for a new hairstylist, check out our new website, hairsalonlocator.com. It's full of all of our FSC partner salons and stylists. So the people that watch these videos and train with us on a monthly basis are on there so that you can find them and find the right salon for you. So check out Hair Salon Locator. Locator.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. And guys, remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below because you could win this Vibrastrate iron. Good luck. Let me know in the comments below if you've subscribed. Thanks. Hey guys, it's Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I wanna invite all of you guys to join our new membership program. It's the FSE Partner Program on freesaloneducation.com. It's $19.99 a month. The great thing about this program is that you're gonna get an online class every month, either by me or someone on the FSE team. Also, you get access to our super private FSE Salon group on Facebook. On that Facebook group, you can connect with all the other members that are a part of the FSE's Partner Salon Program. Also, you can ask me any questions that you want daily. And you're also gonna get added to our FSE Partner Salon and Stylist Locator so that people that watch our videos, we get millions of views a month, tons of people asking if we know of great salons. So that's really where this whole concept came from. So we're gonna help you train. We're gonna work with you in the Facebook group and we're gonna add you to the Salon Locator so people can find great salons out there. I look forward to connecting with all of you guys as you sign up. Thanks. So grab a snack, grab a friend, and hang in. So grab a snack, grab a friend, and hang in.